We've come to Aylesbury to see one of the UK's first installations of the Tesla Powerwall 3. And we've asked Joju Solar, who are complete experts in installing chargers, batteries, solar, etc., if we can pester Child, who is the homeowner and has two Tesla Powerwall 3s. Now, we know with home batteries that they are a really useful bit of kit to store excess solar or to store excess electricity when electricity is cheap and to use it when it's more expensive or to provide backup power in an outage. And with zero VAT to pay, they are increasingly popular and increasingly being opted by lots of people who have solar arrays on their property. But when it comes to the Tesla Powerwall 3, we also know that that is a premium bit of kit. So we want to find out what makes it so impressive and worthwhile. Love everything electric? Join us live in the South this October and in Australia, London and Canada in 2025. So we have two Tesla Powerwall 3s, hot off the press. Um, each 13 and a half kilowatt hours potential storage, so there's 27 kilowatt hours in total. On the roof we've got 40 panels, we've got some facing south, some facing east and some facing west. So as the day progresses hopefully they all add up to keep the house going. We should say that today is incredibly wet and incredibly rainy, incredibly overcast, but you are still generating some solar. We are, we are. Um, deliberately oversized the, the array such that on days like this, there would be at least enough to power the house without using the grid. Now, obviously, we are so extremely excited to be seeing one of the first installations of the Tesla Powerwall 3. And it is really a very impressive bit of kit and there are loads of stats that I want to try and share with you. So I'm going to try and remember the key ones. Okay, now first of all, these have a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours. That's a little bit bigger than some of the other batteries that are available on the market. Something like Give Energy or Libby is more like 10 kilowatt hours. Now Tesla believe that 13.5 kilowatt hours should be the standard size capacity that you should need in a household. And that's because the average household uses about 11 kilowatt hours of energy per day. And obviously that number will go up the more electrification, for example, if you have a heat pump um, in your home. So if you did have a power cut, obviously you could turn off those really intensive loads like your washing machine um, and your tumble dryer and 13.5 kilowatt hours should be absolutely fine to see you through that day. And of course, if you had solar, you'd be topping that up as well. Now, these are pretty powerful. They have a continuous power of 11.05 kilowatts. The Tesla Powerwall 2 conversely had a continuous power of five kilowatts, so really good for some of those higher, um, more power intensive loads. And they actually have a peak power of 30 kilowatts, which it can run at that power for short periods of time. So if you have anything that does need a huge amount of power to start up, these are gonna be absolutely brilliant. They are slightly narrower in profile, but slightly thicker in profile than their Tesla Powell to, Powell to predecessors. And they're also slightly heavier. They are 130 kilos, versus the Powerwall 2's 114 kilos. And part of that is down to the fact that it has an integrated inverter inside, which also has the benefit of making it that much neater. They are waterproof up to 60 centimeters. So about there-ish, just so you've got your sort of bearings. I'm 164 centimeters, so yeah, about there, I would say. Now you might think that that's not particularly helpful, we don't really see those conditions, but actually, you know, you may be storing these outside or in a garage, which could be that much more vulnerable to, to mild flooding. And you can be very confident that these are gonna be absolutely fine and still provide that backup power. They're air-cooled, so that is why there's a little gap underneath these so that it can keep those batteries cool by having that sort of airflow underneath it. They're LFP, that is extremely exciting. Predecessors have been NMC. And LFP has the added benefit of being having a huge amount of th thermal stability and also degrading over a slower period of time. And that means that these are totally capable of operating between minus 20 and 50 degrees C. These have an integrated inverter, which means that I think they look pretty neat, but does that make it also easier to install? The simple answer is you have one piece of equipment that handles both the solar and the battery side of things have one piece of equipment that you need to commission. Less wiring, less equipment, it's all in all. Yeah, it's much easier to install. So we've also recently featured on the channel um, solar panels that have micro-inverters. So obviously they get that, they can generate more over a broader window. But if they already have micro-inverters, are they compatible with something that has an integrated inverter? So one of the good things with Power 3 is how flexible it is. So like I said before, you can have it in this kind of hybrid DC couple setup. 
if you do have somewhere that you have mag converters because you've got lots of shading present on site, then the Power 3 can also be retrofitted to that too. So it can work in both worlds. How did you go about sizing this and knowing what was appropriate for this type of property? So Charles came to us, his motivation behind this project was to basically get off grid as much as possible. So to minimise how much he was importing from the grid at any one time. To do that, it essentially meant maximising the roof space with solar. So to give a background into why we put so many panels on the roof, the generation of solar throughout the year is like a bell curve. So it peaks in the summer months and it really dips off in the winter. To make sure he could get off grid as much possible throughout the whole year, so in summer as well as winter, we basically oversize the system. So if you imagine that bell curve, it brings up the tail ends so that he's off grid as much as possible in the winter months. Oh my goodness, and I think that is probably an important point because he's, he has got a reasonably quite large property. Yep. He's also working from home, running lots of um, computer systems to support his engineering work. So I imagine, yeah, it's an oversized system, but also oversizing for an already quite high consumption as well. This has a solar to home efficiency of 97.5%. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean? So it's quite straightforward to explain. So the solar on the roof, that's generated in DC electricity. To get it usable in a home, it needs to be AC. So with the Power 3 in this setup, it will go from DC to AC once. So one conversion of energy. And when it's converted, you do get a small loss. And that's what you get the 97.5%. Ah, so basically a really, really efficient inverter where you're only losing 2.5% of that energy as it goes from DC to AC. Yes. I'm sure you come across customers who already have Tesla Powerwall 2s. If they mm. wanted to add more capacity, could they bolt on a Tesla Powerwall 3 system as well? So right now, they're not compatible with each other. Ah. So if you wanted to add additional storage to a Powerwall 2, we would recommend getting a Powerwall 2 to bolt onto it right now. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of viewers who are like, damn, yeah. I've got that 13.5 <laughs> kilowatt hour system. Yeah. So we have here, the uh, obviously, the two Tesla Powerwall 3s but they also need a backup gateway. What is that bit doing? Yeah, so the backup gateway essentially is like an on-site meter. So it sits after the, the electricity meter and it monitors what the house is importing and exporting. It monitors what the house is consuming mm. and it also monitors how much the solar PV is producing. Ah. With that information, it can then, for example, decide when to charge or discharge the batteries. These ones here are currently not exporting. Yep. What needs to happen for them to be able to do that? In the summer months, if, he, if the array is overproducing, for example, and there's surplus so that the house doesn't need, the two batteries are fully charged. The hot water diverters heated the water to so maximum. If there's still a surplus, then it will naturally get exported to the grid and the customer will get um, an export payment for that. The other route to go down is if they sign up to a variable or a smart energy tariff. We have off-peak, peak tariffs. You can put that into the Tesla app so you can get the Powerwalls to essentially charge up, say example, in the winter on an off-peak tariff during the early hours of the morning. And then they can be discharged um, in the evening when there's like a peak, a higher price essentially for the export. I see, and I've seen that you can integrate Octopus, for example, which I know offer those sorts of tariffs. But presumably there are other energy providers that offer a similar sort of integration. Yeah, there are other energy providers too. Um, and it's really good because it's good for the customer because they're incentivized, they get a higher export payment. But it's going to the grid when the demand's highest too. So it's trying to kind of put as much green energy in at that time as possible. So you can feel very good that they've got a little bit, few more pennies in their pocket, but also good for balancing the grid and, yeah. and helping that side of things. Win-win scenario. Something which is extremely, extremely exciting is that Joju Solar, who did this installation, are not only going to be at Everything Electric South in Farnborough on the 11th, 12th and 13th of October, but they are also offering Everything Electric Show subscribers £300 off an installation. And that means that you can have a Tesla Powerwall 3 plus the installation cost for £8,100. The Powerwall 3 not only offers a sleek design, but also provides a seamless digital experience, something which we've come to expect from Tesla products. 
The app features several useful functions, including time-based control for optimizing energy usage and integration with your energy provider to track savings. And there are some other cool things like Stormwatch mode, which automatically activates during severe weather alerts, charging the power to full capacity for backup power. And of course, there are numerous ways to visualize your home energy data and to gather insights. And I'm particularly excited about the potential for the VPP feature, in which the Powerwall 3 will integrate with a virtual power plant, something that's rumoured to be coming to the UK very soon. Since we switched on on Friday, we generated enough to keep us going until about one in the morning, which was a surprise. Uh, and then we've only been on grid a couple of times uh, since then. This morning was one of those occasions where there wasn't quite enough in the battery from yesterday. Um, but there, have, there was a point yesterday afternoon where we had too much uh, and we had to switch on all the appliances just for the fun, just to use up the power. So. Well, I think I ha you were saying earlier that you put the underfloor heating on. I imagine there are many households, we're filming this on Friday, the 27th of September, of September. It's been cold, it's been miserable. I imagine there were lots of debates across the UK of should we turn the heating on? But you've got to turn your underfloor heating on. So there you have it, that is the Tesla Powerwall 3. No question, it is a little bit more expensive than the other competitors that exist on the market, but what you get for your money is pretty profound. There are some extremely impressive stats here and it does integrate so nicely into the rest of your system. However, when it comes to your own property, of course the answer is, if you're debating between a Tesla Powerwall 3 and something else, the answer always is, it depends. It depends on your type of property, your geography, how you use your house, how you live within your house. And of course, that's when you can reach out to the experts like Joju Solar to help walk you through that process. But that is all that we have time for today. Please do like and subscribe. Please do let us know what you think in the comments. And if you have been, thank you for watching.